I've been flying around for the last half hour calling for you. But I should have known you'd be here. What's up guys, welcome to episode 48 of Retro Buyer's Guide. Today's episode is about one of my favorite localization teams and publishers, Working Designs. So let's just get right into it. The story of Working Designs really begins and ends with Victor Ireland. In 1988, Ireland, a young game enthusiast, was hired on at Working Designs in Redding, California. Programmer Todd Mark and venture capitalist Sylvia Schmidt originally formed the company to develop accounting software. Ireland was hired on to finish programming some code that was left unfinished after Mark unexpectedly passed away. Once the job was finished, he pitched a new direction for the company to his boss and president, Sylvia Schmidt, localizing PC engine games. Schmidt agreed and Working Designs took its first steps into the world of publishing and localizing Japanese video games for American gamers. For those of you unfamiliar, localizing is the practice of taking a game that was designed for a different cultural audience, usually from Japan, and changing the dialogue or art to make it palatable for a different audience, in this case, a Western audience. While this was already happening in gaming to some degree, it can be argued that working designs took it to a new level, though they got off to a rocky start. Congratulations, you're a winner! Our philosophy of translation is different than virtually anybody else out there because rather than do a literal translation, we try to do the translation, find out the spirit of what was said, and then write in that same spirit in English so it feels natural. We'll put something else in there that's very American um, that people will get and laugh at and have a good time with. Uh, I know I shouldn't look a gift horse in the mouth, but what kind of cheesy pop is that? With Working Design's new focus in mind, Ireland quickly established a relationship with Japanese publisher Taito to publish a couple of their games for the then-fledgling TurboGrafx-16. The first game released in very limited quantities by Working Designs was a fairly straightforward port of Parasol Stars, the story of Bubble Bobble 3. You play as Bubby and Bobby, the main characters from Rainbow Islands. You're armed with a parasol, or umbrella, which you use to attack enemies and fling them at other enemies, or shield yourself from their attacks. The next Working Designs game was a little more in tune with the company's later signature releases. Kadash, a side-scrolling action and platform game with RPG elements, was released in 1991. Players can choose from four character classes, including the Fighter, Mage, Priestess, and Ninja. The game takes you through several areas where you'll kill monsters and bosses, earn gold and experience, and power up your character with new equipment, items, and magic and villages. Though it's not as deep as other action role-playing games like Zelda II The Adventures of Link, Kadash is a good game in the genre. While Parasol Stars didn't sell as well, Kadash did okay, allowing working designs to break even but it became clear that publishing on the cartridge format was much more expensive than a compact disc. So when the TurboGrafx CD was released, Working Designs moved to publish on that format instead. We did okay on uh, Kadash and we lost our shirt on Parasol Stars, but between the two, we broke even. So it was okay, we learned a lesson. It didn't cost us anything except time. And now we know we're not gonna do that again. <laughs> we're gonna do CD from here on out because we can control the time frame, we can control the manufacturer, it costs us much less. Um, and, you know, the games that I wanted to do by that point were, were all CD-based anyway. You know, mm -hmm. it was all, uh, you know, Cosmic Fantasy, Exile, Exile 2, um, Tension of Uta. There was a whole bunch that we didn't do that I really wanted to do. Cosmic Fantasy 2 turned out to be a pivotal release as it marked the first time Working Designs put out a product that the company would later become known for. The game is a fairly standard role-playing game for the time, but what sets it apart is the excellent localization and voice acting, which Ireland oversaw himself. Isn't it beautiful, Van? It's my lucky charm. Get that thing away from me! It gives me the creeps! Laura! The story is, in my opinion, pretty basic RPG 101 stuff. 
A boy grows up with a princess who's been living in his village secretly. The evil empire attacks and she is abducted, and the boy must set off on a quest to rescue her. But again, what makes this game great is working design's stamp of personality for the characters and the often comical dialogue. I can't stress how unique this was for the time. Many RPGs that were released suffered from bad translations, sometimes resulting in nonsensical dialogue. But the care and effort that went into Cosmic Fantasy II didn't go unnoticed by fans, and working design soon built a cult following. With Cosmic Fantasy II a success, Ireland moved his interest toward the newly released Sega CD. Not only did it have a bigger install base, it also had some fantastic releases the company could localize. One of those titles was Popful Mail, a side-scrolling action RPG with full voice acting and all the working design's charm you could hope for. It, it sounded unlike... Hey! Are you blind or something? Up in the tree, a dunderhead! Perhaps the biggest and most beloved release by Working Designs is the Lunar series. Initially, both Lunar Silver Star Story and Lunar Eternal Blue were released on the Sega CD. They are both fantastic releases in their own right. But the pinnacle of Working Designs' creativity and magic for me came with the release of Lunar Silver Star Story Complete on PlayStation 1. The game featured full enhanced animated cutscenes, enhanced gameplay and graphics, and a lavish deluxe collector's package with a hardbound instruction book and cloth map. Collector's packaging would become a staple for working designs in future releases. I understand that not every retro gamer plays or enjoys Japanese role-playing games, but if you have even a cursory interest in what made working designs great, Lunar Silver Star Story Complete is a good jumping off point. It's one of my favorite games in general for its fantastic cast of characters and voice acting. Yes, even Null. In your dreams, magical thoughts. All things are real unless you dream they're not. In your dreams, love is the plot. Carried on wings of hope. Each of our souls. Though it can feel a bit grind-heavy at times, Lunar Silver Star Story Complete is truly one of the best JRPGs ever released. I highly recommend it. By 1995, things had started to slow down for Ireland and company. Working Designs had published a handful of games for the PlayStation and had moved over to the ailing Sega Saturn. Though initially announced during the reveal of the console at the June 1994 Tokyo Toy Show, Magic Knight Ray Earth would actually become the final Sega Saturn game released in the United States. Many difficulties arose during the localization process, including some of the original source code becoming lost after a hard drive crash. The game is based on a manga and anime of the same name and stars three Japanese 8th graders who are summoned to another dimension by a powerful magician to save it. It's another fantastic game by Working Designs, but being released at the end of the Sega Saturn life cycle didn't do the company any favors. As a result, it's one of the harder Sega Saturn titles to find and certainly one of the more expensive ones for collectors to get their hands on.
Things slowed down significantly for working designs in the next decade, with the company publishing only three titles for the PlayStation 2. Licensing had become much more expensive, and the company had originally intended to release Growlancer 2 and Growlancer 3 as separate releases. However, Sony ultimately forced Working Designs to release both games together as Growlancer Generations. This proved to be costly for the company, and by 2005, Ireland officially shut the doors, leaving behind a lasting legacy of localized RPGs. Basically, it's an issue of hindsight's 2020. We should have gotten approval, concrete approval for the titles before we did the licensing. But the way we had always worked till then is we did the titles, did the licenses, and as long as they met a certain standard of quality, the approval was pretty much guaranteed. And because our account manager had left at Sony uh, and new management came in mm. um, that really weren't gamers and didn't play games and didn't have anything to judge a game on other than the graphics, um, those rules went out the window. Hmm. So they would look at our games and they'd be like, this this is totally not PlayStation 2 level graphics. And it's like, no, but it's, and it's Growlins. I mean, we're talking Growlins. This is a fantastic game. The battle system was innovative. It's it's great game. And uh, that didn't matter. It wasn't the last of Victor Ireland's influence on gaming, though, because in June 2006, Ireland started a new company called Gaijin Works. Ireland continues to localize and publish titles today for the PlayStation Portable and now the PlayStation Vita. Gaijin Works' newest title, Summon Night 6 Lost Borders, is due for release sometime in 2017. That is going to do it for episode 48 of Retro Buyer's Guide. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and please subscribe to the channel to keep up with future videos. Thanks so much, and until the next video, happy collecting.